Father, Lord, you call on us to be holy this morning. We are nothing but filthy rats. But God, in the name of Jesus, you can clean us. Like David, when he said to you, create a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not for away from your presence, nor take not thy Holy Spirit from us. But Lord, this morning, restore to us the joy of our salvation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. As the topic says, call to holiness. A call means to invite or draw into union with Christ. And this kind of call is not when your mother calls you. It's not when your father calls you or your friend calls you. This is a divine call which comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it also brings to know. When you get to call, you get to know. Believe and obey the voice of the Lord. So the call that I speak to this morning is when the voice of the Lord speaks to you. In 1 Samuel 3 verse 10, a divine call is stated. Samuel said, the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Now Samuel was a young man and the Lord called him from a very tender age. He did not understand the call of God. But at this time, he thought it was his yes. mentor who was calling him, Eli. Yes. And he went to him, but it wasn't Eli. Eli said to him, go and lie down. And if you hear the voice, this is what you are to say. So Samuel, then Samuel answered. And what he answered, he said, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. This morning, brothers and sisters, we need to listen to hear what the Lord is saying to us. All of us have talents, all of us have abilities, all of us are endowed with gifts, but are we using them to the glory and the honor of Almighty God? Let's do reflection. Let's do stock taking this morning. Am I really doing what God wants me to do? Or I'm just doing what I think I should do. This morning, the other word is holiness. The state of being holy speaks to purity or integrity of moral character in our society these days. A lot of character is being smeared because of the pleasing of other people. We do things to please people and not to please God. But what God is calling to us this morning, saying to us this morning, we need to focus on him so that we can be free from sin. Paul the Apostle in Romans 6 and verse 13, he said that we are not to use our bodies as instrument of unrighteousness. Romans 6, 13. And in 14, he said, we must use it as instrument of righteousness. And this morning, God warns us not to be filled with imperfections, which lead to the practice of immorality, which speaks to evil and bad character. When we look in our society, in our churches, there are persons who possess bad character. I know I won't get a amen for that. But the church of Colossians were infected with the teaching of heresies. Nowadays, people are not reading the Bible and applying the Bible. We must take the Bible literal. But we are trying to find ways to explain and to simplify and to let people sit in, in, in a citadel where they are comfortable in sin even though they are in church. So we have to watch our, the words that come from our mouth. We have to watch the way in which we behave and all of that. Okay? Paul beseeches them to abstain from fantasies they have been pursuing. Sometimes, you know, when we look around us, persons do things so that others can look up to them as a certain type of person. So they pursue Things that will you know, oh, sister so and so, or brother so and so is good because of what they are pursuing. And sometimes we mistake God blessing for some of the things that we are pursuing, but God is not in that. He is saying to 
something else this morning. Be ye holy. Because I, the Lord God, I am holy. And it's not easy to attain holiness. So we don't think that one day we get saved and live a little life and we become holy. Because there is another being there that is after you. The more you try to be holy, the more you are being tested and tried. Because the enemy wants to trample on you. But this morning, in the name of Jesus, we must be victorious, cornerstone. We must stand up for the Lord. We must prove that the Lord God can keep us from falling and to present us from evil. So Paul exalts the Colossians to be heavenly minded. We must live each day at the end of the day when we're going to our bed as if it's the last day. And when we see the fallen day, we must open our eyes and say, Thank you, Lord, for another day. Before we start our day's activities. He said that we are to mortify, put away all, kill them. Kill them, all the bad habits, all the bad things. Mortify them, all corrupt, corrupt affections. We must mortify them, get rid of them, and live in mutual love. Mutual love, forbearance, and forgiveness. Forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, cornerstone. Forgiveness. You will always be hurt. And all kind of things will always happen to you. But we need to learn to forgive. Make no sense to marinate ourselves in bitterness. It made no sense to sit down in a seat of earth. It's not going to carry you anywhere. It will carry you to depression and frustration and disappointment. So what we need to do is to get out of that and get to the place where we can love. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Love. Love. Very important. Love. And you have to love even those who hurt you and do all manner of evil things against you because you are loving for righteousness sake you are loving because you want to be holy satan will always have his servants out there trying to attack you but you don't have to fall under him some of the things that are spoken of is the immorality it is affecting us daily and I point out one because today is supposed to be out today. So I assume we were having young people here this morning. But look here, there are young people here still. And I want them to know, and us as adults need to be reminded of these sort of things. Because we are not all that perfect, eh? Oh no. So why, why does Reverend Marshall want to speak about sexual immorality? Because it's full in Jamaica. And it is coming. And I want the adults to be able to teach the young ones that they must flee from these things and don't be entangled in them because there is a set of adults getting to the younger ones and having them becoming their disciples. So parents, you ought to teach your children. That is why God said to the children of Israel, you ought to teach your children. When you walk with them, teach them. When you lie down with them, teach them. Put it up on the doorpost. Put it up on their bed. Everywhere that the word of the Lord is always there. Sexual immorality, fornication. Nowadays it appears as if sex is just an activity so you just have it. It is not like so. The body is a temple of the Lord. So we don't go around dashing our bodies around as if it is nothing. That's the only thing you have for yourself. And you are to take care of your body. So it can't be just thrown away. I wouldn't say Tom, Dick and Harry, those names not given these days again. So you can't give Marlon. And you can't give 
stretch hand and you can't but I give on to Tashika and Tamika and all those names. You see? But fornication, young people, is sex before married. God has instituted sex for married people. Yes, many are fallen already. Alright, fine. But now that you're in the house of the Lord, no more fornication. So sex outside of marriage between people who are not married, it is classified as fornication. Then we look at adultery, where people have extramarital affairs outside of their marriage. Brothers and sisters, if your body is a temple, you can't have your body just like give it away so. It has to be that which you keep for yourself and the Lord. When it comes to the time when he provides who he wants to provide for you, he knows that that other party becomes a part. But right now, if you're married, you don't need nobody more than the one somebody where you are. I'm not getting any hallelujah this morning. I'm teaching. I'm teaching this morning. But you don't need more than the one somebody. You don't need to go there and get experience to come back home. God might be that you are not coming back home with something else coming with you. So keep what you have. And deal with what you have. Satisfy with what you have. And make the best use out of what you have. You're not no better than their junk shop. So you might as well keep it. Alright? Praise the Lord. Then there is a problem here where this name homosexuality is having sex with the same sex. In the book of Leviticus, starting from 18 right through, the Lord speak to the children of Israel. He said a man should not lie with a man as he would be a woman. The woman's body is a receptacle for a man and not a man's body. So your children must be taught that when they reach a stage, they become attracted to a woman. You see, Adam, Adam was made first, you know. And God knew that Adam needed somebody to satisfy him. That's why he gave him a woman. I am saying this because I, you see those glorified children you have at home? You don't know what they are doing out there. You don't know who is after them. So you have to teach them morning, noon, and night that these things are wrong. And if we live in Jamaica, I want to put this in. Those who have children who are 18 and over and have not been newly enumerated to vote, it's time to send them to go and vote. Because when a referendum is being run, all when you're going to say, no, it's not right, you don't have a vote. So those who have a vote and want it, they will vote it in. Church, come on, let us be wise. My God. This is not a JLP and PNP business, you know, Amen. when a referendum coming up. Amen. It is a sin business. Yes. And we have to beat out sin out of society. So your children are there, once they are 18, tell them go and renumerate. Or you take them, carry them, let them get renumerated. Because when the time comes, you don't have a vote to vote against it. So those who are with it have vote because they are trying their best. So we have all kind of things coming upon us, brothers and sisters, and we need to be wise. Children of God, you need to be wise. So whatever government you say, I'm not with it, and whatever I say, I am with it. That is their business. You must have a vote to say I am with or I am not with it. Have a vote. Amen. So we talk about this and then we look at incest which is having sexual relationship with family members. Go into the same limit because 18 it says you must have sex with your father your mother. Your father wife your father your, your mother husband your stepbrother, your stepsister, 
your auntie and your uncle, your first, second, and third, and fourth cousin. If you marry two cousins, you know, then lock up the marriage officer. So incest must be wiped out at family. There are some family that are very, very incestuous. Yes. But it must be wiped out. And once you know about it, you must put a stop to it. Sex with the animal, I don't. The Bible said. The Bible said. Human and animal should not have sex. Leviticus 18 from 6 to 26 and you can read the rest of Leviticus and make it a lot of things in it. We have to read our Bibles. Read our Bibles daily. The teachings are there which match in with what is happening today. Immorality. These are some other immorality that we must put off. Anger. Which is a violent passion of the mind, excited by a real or supposed injury to give desire to reprove the offender. Some of us get so angry that sometimes we say, If me never have Christian, you see? Yeah. I know this is a teaching morning. This is not a morning to trouble. Yeah. But God said, Be holy. And sometimes the anger that stirs up inside of us, even if you don't say it out, it is there. What you would have wanted to tell somebody, it is there. And all the plan, if I never had Christian, what would I lick them down? And what I would do? And all these sort of things, the anger is there. The other day I was reading an article, the woman husband came home. The man had been working over time to carry her on the wedding anniversary. And he came in very late that night and she told him to go sleep on the couch. I hope no wife not send husband in a couch. I hope no wife and husband not sleep in a I hope no wife and husband not turn back from one another. When the man just married a son and hug up and blow you one another face, what happened? <laughs> so if the honey running out of the moon, get a cock and stop it. That's right. Anger. The Bible said, let not your wrath. The sun go down in the evening. And the wrath. And the other word is wrath. Extreme anger. Which may even cause murder. It's anger in Jamaica that cause all these murder, you know. Yeah. And all of a sudden, if somebody is, is angry with somebody, it's just killed. Because of extreme anger. There's a set of persons who have this pent up anger inside of them. And then it becomes so <laughs> tense that yes, thank you, sister Pierre. They become so tense that they have to demonstrate how they are feeling. And they explode, tell words that the other one would not want to hear. Somehow Abuse, physical abuse take place. Emotional abuse take place. Because of what? Extreme state of anger. Filthy communication is the next. Expletives. Some of us as Christians have some word we need to trim off. You might not think that they are. And I told you before that my brother-in-law get off one day at the business place and my niece and nephew came and said, Mommy, 
daddy cause some bad word today. Mommy, I know the Christian one, let me know. <laughs> Well, there's no Christian bad word. If they are expletives, they are expletives. There is none for Christians. The word, it says that it must be seasoned with salt. And we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savor. You know, fresh food, if you are not... I accustomed to eat food without salt. It doesn't taste good. If you are not accustomed to drink tea without sugar, it don't taste the same way. But I want to say that if we are the salt and the light of this world, our communication must be at the standard where in which the other person can say oh she's really a child of God amen praise the Lord then malice is a behavior that is intended to harm people or their reputation or cause them embarrassment and cause them to be upset we know that definition don't fit the kind of malice we want. But I put it there because there's a kind of malice we exist even in the church. Yes, sister. You don't want to talk to the sister. But if somebody asks you, have you seen Sister Rickman? Yes, she over there, so. But you're not going to call Sister Rickman to say, Sister Rickman, Sister Joyce wants you. You're not getting into it because you're not Sister Rickman. Not the on good terms. Because Sister Rickman did tell you the truth. The other thing about it is that we hear things about people we don't find out the truth about it. And we just cut off from them because of what the other party say. Those who are trying to abuse one's reputation by carrying on communication that is not complementary to the person's lifestyle. Let us stop it now. Let us stop it now. It's not everything we hear. It's perfect gospel. It's not good to repeat. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling us to holiness, you know. And some of the, the things that we think are little, they keep on piling up and soon become high as Blue Mountain Peak. And when it becomes like Blue Mountain Peak, he hard to move it, you know. And even when you are speaking and saying the name of Jesus, mountain be moved. It's not easy to bulldoze at the Blue Mountain Peak. Not even Britain Hill, you can't do it. So it's important that daily you will be offended. Things will happen that affect you. But in the name of Jesus, we still have to forgive. Yes. And we still have to love. And we still have to care. So Cornerstone, I am saying to you, you are a loving set of people this morning. You are quite a good support team. Let's keep the spirit. Amen? Let's keep the spirit. Then, we look at morality in the Lord's house. He said that we are to put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy something happened to somebody we feel it because we are part of the yes, body yes. and even when the person is in the wrong because of mercy mercy know that the thing is wrong and we should have been punished but mercy says no give some grace and that is what we must do because when we are about these things you are there hurting because of what you think. Because sometimes you don't know if that is how the person meant. And you are hurting and the person is over there laughing and enjoying life. And you over the side sad and disappointed. Because the person, sometimes people don't even know that what they did hurt you. So that is 
is why they are enjoying life and you sit there wallowing into the hurt. It is time to stop feeling hurt. And if somebody affects you, let the person know how you feel. And you would be surprised to know how that looks to you. Okay. Then also kindness. All the people who are in this support group called hey! kindness. <laughs> oh, you're not kind. Of Some don't even remember what group they are in. Be kind in one to another. Kindness. And kindness is not to give me a dinner or to give a thousand dollars. Kindness go far beyond that. Far, far. Sometimes kindness causes you to give up all that you have. Because of kindness. Humbleness. Some of us are very haughty. When the year comes the 30th of, of July when we are going up the road to pray. And then we see who want to pray from who is haughty not to want to go there and anybody pass and see them. And who going to stay home because they're going to go pray up the road. Well, whether you want to come or not, in the name of Jesus, we're going up there. Amen? Amen. Praise his name. And also, humbleness of mind, meekness, these are things that we have. And nobody wants to talk about long suffering, but you suffering very long. Hmm? Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And I think I've gone through that. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so you also should do. If you are striving towards holiness, I want to tell you, a person hurt you, and you know, say, you're right. The Bible says if you know that your sister has a heart against you or your brother, you who know is to go and make it up. Not the person to come and make it up. You, know? you who know that the person has a heart, a heart against you, you are to go and make it up with that person. Nobody has said, I am wrong and I am me and whatever. Go and make it up with the person. Say, although such and such happen, I forgive you. I had to do it before I can tell you. And when you finish, tell the person you're sorry. Don't read it, no man. You know, every time you read the Bible, Every time you read the Bible. Every time I read the Bible. I cannot need the knowledge. Every time I read the Bible. I feel alright. And every time I read the Bible. I get a little knowledge. And every time I read my Bible, I get to know Jesus Christ. So read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day and you grow, grow, grow. Put on charity. What is charity? Love. Love. And he keeps on telling us some morning that we're to love. Amen? Amen. Which is the bond of perfection. And he said, Let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. This morning, the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us 
we need to go into a time of confession. We went through a week of prayer emphasis. And I don't know how many persons were involved in that week of prayer. But there were so many things that were existing in our lives that we need to put to the Lord added to those things that were listed and given to us to pray. But this morning, the God who I serve and the God who you serve is saying to us this morning, be ye holy. For a moment, let's bow our heads as we reflect on our individual life. All of us, young and not so young. Am I living right? Am I doing the right thing? Am I living according to God's principle? So that my life can be an example to my neighbors, to my co-workers, to my household. 